Have you had a good day? It's great to hear. Did you guys have a chance to go check out the AR demos? Okay. Please, if you haven't, check it out tomorrow or you can do it again. Last presentation of the day. The future of user experience, part two. Promise you guys, I'm going to tell you, reveal you, how to create those unlimited amount of billion euro niches. And of course, how to be ready for the future of user experience already today. Sounds okay? Let's get to it. So we spoke about the morning, or I spoke about the, <coughs> the winner takes it all companies, and really tried to distill it into as short form as possible. What do they do? So they want to have direct ownership of the customer, right? Direct ownership of the customer. Don't let anyone else to have contact with the customer. And they will have it all the time. You need to build the business model so that your customer wants to use your service all the time. And they want to do it at a scale that we've never witnessed before in human history. And they make this all possible using technology to lower the production costs. This is happening in various multiple industries today. And as Risto also said, <coughs> there will emerge new kind of companies, pure AI companies, who will start to tackle industries that we never thought would be possible to be disrupted. The question, of course, is, is it too late already for some of these industries? And my message was at the morning that Definitely not. There's endless amount of new possibilities because the way we interact with the internet is evolving faster than ever. So many new devices coming out. So many new ways to use those devices. And of course, the machine learning and artificial intelligence that can help to fine tune, to personalize, those services in a way at a scale that we've never seen before. So endless amount of possibilities for all of us and what is the key thing? Just like Anni Ronkonen said from Kesko, what they've realized is they need to create user experience or customer experience, they use that word, that stands out. That is the only choice for them to survive in the future. And I truly agree. Of course, I agree at Frosmo. So the question really is, to put it again and again, just to repeat it, how do we own the customer all the time? How do we have this direct, amazing connection with the customer all the time? And I come back to, again, to this augmented reality. Might sound a little too distant in the future to you now, but just, just a scenario. Let's play a little bit with it. So you try it out, the HoloLens a little bit clunky, but now, if you have those really lightweight glasses and you have the wireless earpods connected to the smart, intelligent assistant, you have the watch and you walk down the street, you pass a store and you see a beautiful dress on the store window. <coughs> Your glasses immediately recognize this, the dress. And they can tell, tell you right away, hey, would you like this to buy this dress from your regular provider, the trusted provider? And you're like, yeah, well, why not? But let me take a look first, you know, how it looks like in different colors. And you're just standing there and checking out if the dress looks better on you, if it's yellow, red, green. And then you just say, okay, I'll take this. And you look at the watch, and the face recognition approves the payment, and it tells you it's shipped to your home automatically. 
and you never entered. You never entered the store. So what's going to happen with the stores? In the States, they haven't built a new mall for 15 years. Laying off tens of thousands of people from these stores. So in a sense, of course that user interface is not possible yet, but in a sense this movement is taking place, the disruption is already happening. These classes might arrive actually quite soon. We, my personal bet is that within two to three years Apple will introduce it and then it will become mainstream. Might be something like Magic Leap, we don't know yet much about it, they're so secretive, but they've raised over a billion or something crazy. Maybe they release something sooner than that. Nevertheless, my bet is within the f next few years that is possible, what you saw there. So again, because of all these new ways we enter, interact with the internet, the only for way for us to own the customer is through superior user experience. There is no way to go around it. That's where our focus needs to be. And unfortunately, because of this speed, this pace of change, we cannot build you as, as a project like this anymore. Panama Channel works brilliant in steel, but the dynamics are a little bit different, as we know. Risto said about the data, you need to be start collect collecting it and understand what to collect now that you can use it in five years. Same thing, we cannot wait for five years to build amazing systems to collect that data. So let's try to deconstruct the requirements for this future of user experience. So that we can be ready, right? Ready for that kind of future that I showed there. Ready for that, what's going to happen in five years. So the first obvious thing is that it has to work on any kind of device. Whatever devices we have now, and whatever kind of devices will emerge, coming out, popping out all the time. Do you agree? It has to work on every device, now and in the future. The second thing is that it needs to be super easy to tap into any kind of feed of data. Your internal API, external API, the smart artificial intelligence assistants. Alexa has an API already. I assume Google and Apple will have no other choice than to introduce also their own APIs. Only so few companies will be able to build this kind of universal speaking artificial intelligence assistant. Do you guys agree? Okay, second requirement. Third thing, because of the pace of change and the way people interact with these new devices, etc., et you need to be able to push out new kind of user interface elements and also features and logic to all of these devices and modify and change them on the fly. You agree? Good. And of course, it has to be super personalized, otherwise it won't work. That's pretty obvious also. And the last thing is you have to be able to support all of these things while new technologies that we haven't been able to imagine yet emerge. Huh? Impossible. There's no way for us to be ready, right? Luckily, you met Frosmo. So the answer, <coughs> the answer actually, for us, it took quite a few years to understand this, but it's ridiculously simple and obvious. The choice has been made on behalf of us. 
We call it the single tag user interface development. That's the method. And of course, what it means is that to your website, web application, whatever the device is, as long as you have those two rows of code there, that simple JavaScript tag, you have access to change the user interface in that device. The brilliance of it is the complete freedom to develop. It's completely system agnostic. Amazon, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, they've all admitted, they've all, they're all behind JavaScript as a language. That is the development language that works for all devices, every devices, now and in the future. And this method makes the usage of JavaScript so simple because we gain the access to any of these devices. It doesn't mean that you could let go of the important systems that you have here. Still, you know, processing people's uh, personal data, payments, etc. A little bit too risky in the device. Apple is apparently doing quite a lot of it in the device, for example, with the Apple Pay, but Apple has a very unique system, as we know. Uh, <coughs> we need to be able to handle all sort of information related to, to products. As I told you, uh, how amazing system Amazon has built, for example, for the fulfillment and deliveries. Probably most of the companies in various different industries still need to build something like that. And of course, different kind of uh, data. Oh, sorry, press the work. <laughs> Next button. Funny, I have this amazingly cool presentation, but I can't go back. Oh, magically it went back. <laughs> so, <coughs> and of course, these databases, as we learned, data is so crucially important, so we need to be able to store that huge amount of data somewhere. And for that, you still need these traditional backend processes. But the single tag method is just so simple and powerful. It's almost ridiculous how obvious it is. So, uses JavaScript. Works with all devices, right? The first one ticked off the requirements. The second one, it's safer to develop with it because you're testing on the device, releasing it on the device. As you know, we do it with Frosm all the time. It's superiorly faster compared to traditional web development. It's just ridiculous how much faster it is because you can test and release straight in the device. Data transfer is super easy because we can read with this method any information that is available any, in any user interface, and we can just feed it e easily to other systems. So if you come up with uh, something new you want to, new kind of data you need to collect, we can implement it just like this using this method. Targeting, of course. Each device is an individual device for this system. So of course we can target it. We can make it so personalized up to one even individual Already now, without using any special machine learning things yet or artificial intelligence, if the customer is valuable enough for you, let's make a just user interface just for that customer. But as you learned today, for example, from Megbib's presentation, using this method, it's also very easy to start testing out and trying out machine learning algorithms starting to learn there. And as you heard from MacBib and also from Risto, there is no right answer to it except try out test as soon as possible. Just try out quickly. Also new frameworks, so JavaScript as a language is evolving really rapidly. New kind of frameworks that use the technology in a different way pop out all the time. And if you have old school systems, it's impossible for you to implement those frameworks. But with this method, you can inject any framework to the user interface, any framework. So that's the technology, right? That's the obvious choice. 
I've been preaching this now for quite a few years, so, but still I have to do the same rant again and again. That's the technology. But of course, as Anni said, it is not enough. To create these billion euro niches, to create those amazing user experiences, of course, we need something else. It might be the human creativity, right? But <clears throat> how we see it is, is that you need to create ways to, as an organization, as humans, to, to benefit from this amazing technology. So, e-commerce, it's not easy what we're doing, right? This is a one way to look at it, what we're doing. And sorry for turning my back on you, you have to amaze it, because <laughs> this is really just a tiny bit of it. All sort of things we need to be able to tackle in our everyday lives, right? You got the analytics side, you got the release management teams, you're doing prototypes, mock-ups, you got this, you're optimizing the surge. Of course, you got uh, the marketing side, you need to buy advertising, content management, someone needs to write those beautiful poets, poems about the products and so forth. So, crazy amount of stuff, so much competencies you need for your company organization, so many providers you need to understand what they're doing, tools, etc. Wow, no wonder we're all very confused. And then we have to come back to this. So this is what the winner takes it all companies are doing, right? And if you look at this, how I've divided it, we have the left side and then we have the right side. The left side talks about this direct, direct ownership of the customer all the time. And then the right side talks about this technology that enables, makes this possible, the left side, right? So at Frosmo, we've been thinking about this quite a lot and tried to experience things. And, and we think that to simplify this, to get some idea of that crazy e-commerce cosmos, it's probably the best way to think about it, at least for our current understanding, is to think about two processes. So the left side is the user experience driven processes. And the right side is the production driven processes. And as I said, usually when we talk about the user experience, we forget the other side. But you need that, otherwise you won't be a winner. So production driven processes are those things that are related to the distribution of the products and, of course, the transactions. We spoke about transactions and many of the presentations spoke about the transactions, not necessarily using the word transaction, but, but you know, payments and, and uh, uh, processes between companies, for example, like paying for things or this whole retail chain. Of course, production. So production-driven processes, companies working with companies. They're not that fast and flexible, of course. And then UX-driven processes, it's the people. So those are the, the individuals that use your service and offerings. And for them, this change, this world is changing so much more faster than the companies, obviously. So when we look at that space, I'd say that everything of it is actually UX-driven. And as Rist also showed, showed about the strategy, it's also this, how the future strategies will be formed. It's also this very iterative, fluid, rapid movement where you need to be able to try out all sort of stuff all the time. Introduce new stuff all the time. And then the other part, the production driven, which you also need, is then about these long-term projects processes where you need to carefully think how it impacts the companies you work with. How do you really leverage that for this other side? And again, it's so simple. You can use this method, the single tag method for all of that, for all of those UX processes to improve it. 
That's the vision for Frosmo. We want to be the platform for managing, developing, and, and deploying those user experiences for that process. And then the other process for that, the production-driven, it's more at the moment, at least, these traditional software development projects with agile methods. We're also really exploring and, and working hard on understanding how you lead this in a different way. And it's not necessary that these agile methods that work here work with this process. We're learning that the hard way when it's continuous. It's not projects anymore. It's continuous development, continuous improvements. And it's a very different kind of beast to run. More about that probably next year. So, I promised you the recipe for winning the future of user experience. The first thing was to own the customer always, an omnipresence, using superior user experience. That's the first step. The second part was to leverage strategy and technology, to put it bluntly, to own the producers. Third part, It's a technology. Single tag is by far the best choice to create that UX, perfecting the UX today and tomorrow. And the last part was that when you're leading this, you need to think about two processes, which fall under the UX-driven processes, the fast, fluid, iterative, continuous, and which fall under the production-driven processes using the more traditional agile software development methods, longer, processes, companies, working with companies. So those are the four steps to create the billion euro niches. And this is how the future UX will look like. It's going to be really amazing, isn't it? Again, I promise to you guys, Frosmo will be your partner today and tomorrow for user experience management and development. Thank you so much. <laughs>